Hello and welcome to another macro video. We're looking now at why use macros. So this is for the complete beginner who hasn't really got into macros at all yet but has been told that it might be a good idea. So I asked the question uh, to some of my colleagues why use macros and uh, here are some of the answers that they gave. The analysis macros give a very helpful overview. So if you're starting a job you want to know what horrors are in there and the analysis macros can give you some indication of that sort of thing. Macros help me to ensure consistency. Yes, okay, so if you've seen some of the inconsistencies from the analysis you have ways of getting rid of that inconsistency. Uh, macros are great uh, for letting the computer do the repetitive legwork, so repetitive things uh, are good uh, material, if you like, for macros to get on with. It is a big investment of time, says another, but the more you use them, the better you get. Here's one I like. The macros do the heavy lifting, which they're good at. You do the creative management, which you're good at. So that's uh, what I call teamwork. So playing to the strengths of macros doing macros doing one sort of thing and you doing other things. Uh, it, so working together. Okay, uh, what am I going to cover in this video. I'm going to look at what the macros actually do. I'm going to demonstrate one or two. I'm going to uh, answer your question if you're saying, well, mm, I'm not sure if I can really do this. Uh, it's too difficult. Is it? And then, okay, well, maybe I'll give it a go. How do I get started? Then you might say, well, okay, I've got started. How do I progress? And then just a, a few resources at the end. How do you find all these things? all these macros. So what do they do? Well they give you an overview first of all which is really powerful because if you when you're starting out uh, a job then you want to make <coughs> style decisions and if you can make decisions early then you can uh, save time in the long run. Um, macros can help you re remove authors small mistakes which a lot of which is boring doing spelling changes and hyphenation and things uh, and you can do the rest which is much more fun. I'd also say that macros help uh, to reduce re repetitive strain injury um, because if you're doing a lot of mousing then your hand can uh, become uh, uh, overworked and uh, it can cause pain and so on. So uh, first of all we want to uh, reduce the amount of uh, work that you do on the mouse and secondly to, if we can to uh, move some of the actions away from the mouse towards the keyboard because uh, the keyboards uh, don't cause uh, RSI as much. I've done a video on that so you can perhaps have a look. Um, macros help you to work faster. Yes, that's true. So if you're working on a fixed fee for your job then you're going to end up with a higher hourly rate. Macros are good at catching more mistakes than you do because uh, they don't go to sleep, they don't get bored, they don't start looking out of the window uh, and miss things. Okay, let's see some macros in action. Uh, well, one useful one is uh, Google Fetch, which is a speedy lookup system. So basically, if you suppose you have a word like permaculture and you think, oh, what's that? I want to look it up. Uh, all you have to do is click on it and run the Google Fetch macro. So one way to run macros is to click on View and then go across to Macros and you get a list of all your macros. So if you start typing GO, there we are, there's Google Fetch. So click on Google Fetch and I can run Google Fetch. So basically it copies the word permaculture and pastes it into the find box of Google. So it's very quick and easy. Um, so uh, we could also uh, run a macro from a keystroke which makes it even, even faster. So for example, here we go, a word we think might be spelt wrong. So just simply press, in my case, Alt G and there you go, straight in and there's your answer. And then the other uh, way that they're useful um, is that we can select some text. So if we're trying to check a reference, so I can select that and run the uh, Google Fetch and it gives me uh, links to that reference so I can check the details and see if something's wrong. Okay, but not but that isn't the only thing that you might want to um, look up. 
there may be lots of other things uh, and there are fetch macros for all of these so if you're Australian there's Macquarie fetch uh, there's Merriam fetch for the states thesaurus wiki anything lots of them so you can have a go with those uh, another type of macro is uh, when you're actually editing something, when you're working through reading and changing the words, uh, there's one called verb changer, for example, which will um, speed things up. So suppose you have a bulleted list there and you think, oh, this helps with, ah, no, that should be reading, making and compelling. So uh, if we click in the word and run a macro, it changes it to ing form and ing form and ing form and notice that it's it's spotted that it needs a double L for that word so that's fine um, but actually the same macro goes backwards so uh, if we've got it the wrong way round uh, this helps too and we want the infinitive so again click in the word run the macro run the macro and look this is just silly it's ed so you run the macro once and it changes it to ing run it again, whoops, uh, run it again on that, <laughs> and we've got uh, compel, okay. Another speed uh, macro we've got is numbers to text, or a macro called number to text, so we've got a bit of uh, text there, and those figures should be words, so I click in front of the first one and run the macro once, then again, then again, then again. And I don't actually have to click in the word, I, it will just run along the line to find the next figure and turn it into words. Okay, now there are a whole series of macros, the analysis macros which I've uh, mentioned earlier, which help you to be prepared before you start reading. Um, the first one I want to look at, this is uh, one of the favourite macros for a lot of editors. Um, so what does it do? It lists all the proper nouns in the document, uh, then it uh, counts how many times each word occurs, so you've got an alphabetic list with all the frequencies. Then it searches through that list to see if it can find any similarities, So, uh, and it lists any, any um, similar pairs. So for example, if Be Beverly were misspelt, it would list both of those and, and uh, draw your attention to it, and then you, the creative editor, can um, decide whether this is actually two people or um, a spelling error. Um, and and uh, you then search through that list and pull out any pairs of words that you think you're going to need to check because you think there might be spelling errors. So obviously Avrion and Aviron, um, Brosso, Brusso. Uh, this one, Catherine, that, that's uh, one that um, fiction editors um, bite my hand off for proper noun lies because it's so easy for someone to appear at the beginning of a book as Cathar Ryan Smith and then she goes off to Africa comes back near the end of the book as Cathar Ryan Smith and um, okay if you're good you will uh, spot the difference but this before you even start to read a word of the book proper noun lies will warn you that the, the, uh, the inconsistency a possible inconsistency uh, is there, so you have to watch for it. Uh, another one to look at is hyphenalize. So that lists all the hyphenated words in the whole of the document and gives you the frequency of each of those words. But it's not just the hyphenated ones, it then says, okay, does that hyphenated word occur as two separate words uh, with a hyphen, as one single word, or as dash separated? So there's an example, say, you know, is it is it um, hyphenated or whatever? You can see the difference, and it counts how many times it occurs. I mean, that's obviously a made-up one. Um, but what it also does is looks for uh, prefix words, uh, even if they're not hyphenated. So uh, it will list all of these. Um, you can have you can add if there, if you have other prefixes you use, then you can add them to the list. But it checks all those so that you um, know what's hyphenated and what's not. So you again look through the list, or through, well it's more of a table of, of results, um, and you look for uh, significant pairs, and so here are some examples that I've pulled out. So um, as you can see, you know, uh, you've got to decide whether it, it can be two words 
or whether it really um, uh, fault finding is a good thing to do or fault finding uh, anyway that's that's by the by uh, you're the one who applies intelligence to it uh, Dockerlize is another one. This this was my very first analysis macro, so it was just I was just uh, counting things in the document that I was going to work on, and so I made up the name doc, Document Analysis docu, Dockerlize. Um, what does it look for? Well, there's various things there. You can see the sorts of things that that it's looking for and counting, like like participles there, which form it you, you it, the author has tended to use, and so on. So then you can decide what to do for consistency. But there are lots and lots and lots of uh, analysis macros depending on what sorts of things you want. So for example, if it was Catherine Cather Smith and so on, uh, then you you can run full net full name allies which actually uh, finds pairs of proper nouns so that you can uh, and it shows you the possible confusions with those um, all sorts of different things you can have a look okay uh, so the question is this this sounds good can I actually do this how techy is it well I have to admit that it's uh, not as easy to load a macro as it is to load an app onto your phone or tablet there you would just click on it and say yes I want to load it please. We do actually have to use some copying and pasting of uh, some techy sort of stuff you know the actual the actual macro is a bit of computer code and you have to copy it but all you need to do is to know what the macro looks like so in other words what you know the, the sort of format of it um, you need to know where to put the macros and then obviously you need to know how to use them which <coughs> we've already suggested uh, with getting them off a menu or um, running them from, from keystrokes. Okay, so what do they look like? Well, it, yes, it is a bit techy, I have to admit, but you don't need to actually understand them, you just copy them, um, and you certainly don't want to start changing them. Maybe as you get uh, adept, uh, you might there might be bits at the beginning of a macro which set it up in different ways, so you might get bold and do that. But initially, certainly not. You just need to copy and paste them. So what you need to do is to recognise the name of the macro. Every macro has a name, and it has to be a unique name, and then copy and paste it. Uh, so here we have a macro. Uh, okay, so uh, you've got the. Um, the name of the macro there is swap characters. Um, you've got the beginning of the macro there. The word sub is uh, is what uh, start, uh, indicates the beginning, and the end is what end sub uh, shows you the end. So when we want to copy it, we have to copy the whole thing. Um, now the the next bit is where you put them. Well, yes, okay. That is the set, the scary bit, or at least the place where you have to put them looks scary. It's not scary, and once you become familiar with it, it's just copy paste, copy paste, putting in new macros. But it's the very first one that is the chief problem because you know it it's new and scary, and and actually, if you haven't got any macros at all in your computer, then you've got a few more steps to go through in order to get that very first macro in. But when you've got the first macro in, then the next one's easier and so on. So it's much easier after that. OK, how do I use them? Well, we've already looked at that in a way. We've looked at them pulling them off a menu. Um, and on PCs and some Macs, we say uh, click View, over to Macros, get a list, select the one you want, and say you want to run it. Um, uh, older Macs uh, tends to be um, you go for tools, macros, and view macros, but similar. Uh, keystrokes are faster, but again, setting up a link between a keystroke and a mac macro um, is is a bit technical, uh, but it can be improved. It can be made easier by using a macro to help use do the keystroke. So that's something you can learn as you go along. How do you get started? Well, there's a, a self-learning uh, system or, or, or guide, if you like, uh, which I've called Macros by the Tourist Route. In other words, a slow and steady introduction through the steps that you need to do. 
Um, it's, a, it's a work in progress. We're trying to improve it all the time, make it better, and uh, you can try it out. Um, those are the URLs, but you can easily get them off my website, uh, which you'll see later. Um, I, I would suggest, if you can, ask a friend. If, the, if you've got someone who's already got started, then see if they can work through uh, the Macros by the Tourist route with you. Or even if you've got uh, two of you who haven't done it yet, work on it together on one computer so that you can help each other. And I, from, in, uh, from the days when I did in-person training, uh, it, I always sat two people to one computer and they really did uh, spark off each other and help each other. Once you've got going, uh, how do you progress? Well, the, the rule of th thumb I suggest is just get a couple of macros going, ones that you think will be useful, like the Google Fetch, for example, and prop and analyze, and use them, use them, use them. And the more you use them, the more familiar you get. And then say, OK, well, let's, let's have some more. Um, well, another analysis macro perhaps would be a way to go on that one. Well, the other way is to say, well, what am I doing repeatedly? What's boring? What, what do I have to do over and over again? Is there a macro for that? And it may well be that we can find one uh, by looking at the resources that are available. Which brings me on to resources. So uh, the book, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I produced the, uh, the macros in the form of a book, which you can download. Uh, although it's more a, a series of, of separate files um, and that's available off my website uh, easy enough to find um, but what what's uh, really quite useful is the macro menu um, and that uh, it, again we can, you can pull off the website so let's have a look at that and see how it works so if I r launch that um, so here's the website or that web page what I've called a macro menu and it, it's a menu first of all of the book itself so that's macros for editors is the name of the book and then these are the different sections of the book and um, the, the one we want is the macro menu so if I click on that one um, up I get is uh, the macro menu and it's divided into uh, different types of macros ones to do with bookmarks to do with comments uh, to do with document analysis, we've had a look at those, some of those. Um, so each and every one of these is a macro. So you've got the name at the left and a single line descriptor at the right. So uh, if you click on the name, you get the macro. If you click on the descriptor, then it links you to the pages of the book which contain the instructions for that macro and you can read the instructions in that other file. But to get the macro itself, suppose you want full name allies, click on there, and up, up it comes. Uh, and this is just a page with a great long, uh, it's a huge great macro, this one. Ooh, it's all that boring technical stuff. But all you need to do is to say, I want this macro. So, Control A to, co to uh, select it all, Control C to copy it, and then you're ready to go and paste that into the scary place uh, where the macros live. And you know that's how you get individual macros from the menu. Another resource is, uh, I've done uh, over 160 uh, training videos that you can get off my YouTube channel. And the other resource is your colleagues. Uh, they will help you. So if you have any uh, problems or suggestions, then do get in touch. That's my email address. And I wish you a very happy macroing time. Bye for now.